Hey everybody, welcome to Photoshop 2. Um, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into layers in this lesson and then a few other topics like masks later on. Um, but for now, again, like I said, let's go into layers. Uh, so Photoshop has a really great feature called layer styles and they really allow you to transform images into some pretty great things. So I almost exclusively use Photoshop to edit photos over any other program and because of layer styles. They're really great. So I have opened a photograph in Photoshop right now and this is just a photo of my apartment. You'll see more photos of my apartment later on. Uh, you'll get very familiar with my apartment. So let's just start off with this photo here uh, which I have not edited yet. It is an iPhone photo so the quality isn't that great uh, but nonetheless we're going to edit it a little bit using layer styles. So the layer styles you can find inside of this black and white cookie icon down here. Um, I guess you could just call it a circle that's half white, half black, whatever, up to you. Um, but here you'll find our adjustment layers. And so if you click on that black and white cookie, you can see all these adjustment layer styles. Um, not to be confused with layer styles because there are two things, there are adjustment layer styles and then regular old layer styles. So we're going into adjustment layers for now. We'll cover layer styles in a later uh, lesson. Okay, so adjustment layers here we have uh, so many things that we can do, which is basically mostly photo editing tools. Um, I'm going to show you the most important ones and then I'll let you guys explore the others on your own later. Um, okay, so in order to edit a photo, there are a few different ones that I like. I really like hue and saturation because it allows you to bump down the saturation and turn any photo into black and white. And you'll notice that above my photo background, uh, this let hue saturation layer opened up and this is what's called an adjustment layer. So it allows you to make adjustments to everything below that layer. So if I had a bunch of layers under here, it would actually be turning everything under it black and white. So again, we can adjust this layer like so, bring down the saturation, we can take down the lightness, make it darker, we can make it brighter. And you can see here our little indicators of how far we've gone. And then here we can add a hue. So if I wanted it to be a little bit blue, I would just bump up the saturation and then bump up the lightness maybe or turn it down. And then I can also press colorize, which really, really turns it colors. So if I chose blue, uh, colorize really turns it into actual blue. So I could also turn it into purple or magenta or yellow, up to you what you want to do. And then bump up the saturation really turns it a color or taking it down could add just like a little bit of a yellow tint to it. Um, so fun to play around with though. Okay, so that's hue and saturation. I'm going to delete that. Let's go on to my next favorite, which is levels. So levels are really great when adjusting um, the lighting in a photograph. So you can bump up this, this little triangle on the right hand side of the layer levels is brightness. So if I move it towards the center, it's going to make my photograph really bright. And with an interior photography, you actually kind of want it to be bright. So I'll make that a little brighter. And then this one adjusts the midtones. So I'm making the midtones either darker or lighter. I like it to be kind of in the middle, about right there where it was. And then over here is our shadows. So it's either going to make everything, the shadows dark, or it's going to make them lighter. Um, so that's really using layers, or I'm sorry, levels as an adjustment layer. Um, and you can set presets. Uh, you can increase the contrast with the increased contrast preset and whatnot. You can make it darker with that preset, uh, or you can make your own custom preset. Uh, I just like not using those at all, and then I like kind of adjusting things on my own, um, like so. So if I delete that, you can see my original photo again, and let's move on to the next adjustment layer. Okay, so let's go to curves. Curves, again, really helps with the lighting. And you can kind of see this is a big curve that we can adjust and change. And as I'm adjusting and changing it, different things are happening to my photo. Um, it takes quite a learning curve, no pun intended, <laughs> sorry, um, to be able to handle the curves. I usually proceed with caution when dealing with curves because they can be kind of fickle and confusing, um, but they really are making my photo look so much better. Let's turn off the curves to go back to the old way and look how much nicer and brighter it looks with the curve added onto it. Um, so in this 
if I was actually editing this photo, I would have done this, and then I would go in and add some contrast with brightness and contrast. Um, so again, you're familiar with this, I'm sure. Brightness literally just makes your photo brighter, and then contrast makes it more contrasty, so it makes the darks darker and the lights a little bit lighter. And I think it looks really nice for interior photographs. So on top of my curves that I already have, I would add a little bit of brightness and contrast, which I think is making my image look so nice and make my apartment look so much better than it already did. <laughs> um, so usually whenever I edit photos of my apartment, people think it looks so bright and so clean all the time, but it's really just because I'm adjusting things in Photoshop, which is great. Um, Thank you so much, Photoshop. <laughs> it makes my life look better, at least. Um, okay, so this is the adjustment layers. Um, let's go through some other ones. We did this solid color. This is a fill layer, so we can, again, add our coral color or add whatever color we want on top. Um, I don't want to do that, though. That's not going to help anything. We can add gradients on top of our layers by adding the gradient which could look kind of cool if you were going for something like that. So if I was trying to do this, I could add a little subtle gradient. I can change the color of my gradient down here with these little color pickers. So if I'm trying to change this color, I could go color and then change it to maybe like a nice soft blue. Or I could even sample this green color from the photograph with my color picker. The color picker, again, like whenever you're choosing a color, it just appears on your document on your canvas um, whenever you move your mouse off of the gradient editor and the color picker. So I could just pick a color from the inside of my apartment. Let's move these windows out of the way a little bit. Let's pick this color from this vase or pick Santa's beard color. Really up to you if you actually like the gradient. I'm not sure I'm really into the gradient so I'm just gonna cancel and get out of here. Cancel, cancel. Let's go back to our adjustment layers. We can add a pattern. I'll go more into patterns later. We did brightness contrast, we did levels, we did curves. We could change our exposure a little bit. So again, if, if we were taking a photo with our camera and it was overexposed, that's <laughs> absolutely what it would look like, or underexposed would make it, sorry, would make it darker. Um, I just wanna put that back at uh, zero. Um, offset makes the shadows a little darker. Again, this is kind of like levels. I usually use levels over exposure, but it's up to you which one you want to use. Let's delete the exposure. Okay, so vibrance really just bumps up the saturation and the vibrancy of the photo. So uh, for instance, our space has kind of a lot of pops of color. So if I pump up the vibrance, it's just gonna make the colors just, just subtly brighter. So uh, let's just do that just so I can show you. And then we'll hide this layer just so you can see what it looked like before. And as you can see, very subtle, but that's why I like the Vibrance uh, adjustment layer because it is so subtle and it's really nice to just add a little bit of that to your uh, layer because it made my green a little greener and this bookshelf a little brighter. It's really nice. Okay, uh, let's pick a couple more. So if we go to Photo Filter, for instance, we can add a nice preset filter. So if you're finding that your photograph is a little cool, you can make it warmer by adding a warming filter or vice versa, adding a cooling filter. And then if that's too much, you can take down the density so that it's nice and a little bit subtle. My image, actually, this is what it looked like originally. I think it looks a little, little cool, so I, or a little warm, so I would add just a little bit of a cooling filter on it, but not too much, just 5%. If you don't like the cooling filters, you can just choose a custom color of your own and then bump up the density. Again, we can make it really blue, but I just like a nice subtle 5%. Looks really nice. Okay, lastly, we can do um, something fun down here. We have invert. Okay, now watch what happens when I click invert. Everything <laughs> goes crazy. So it inverts all the colors to their opposite counterpart. So the sofa was pretty dark, so it made it really white and so on. The opposite of green is this magenta pink, I guess. So it changed it to that. I've never once found a use for invert. I challenge you to find a good application for it, <laughs> um, but it's up to you. Again, these are examples to show that there are a lot of things in Photoshop um, that you can use, um, but I have never seen them used well. So it's up to you whether or not you want to use most of these adjustment layers, uh, but those are just the ones that I love so much and that I use all of the time. Uh, so, you know, explore, look around the adjustment layers and see which ones you like. Okay, so let's talk about the actual layer styles. So not the layer adjustment styles that we just talked about, but rather 
layer styles. Okay, so we have a background image here that's my photo from before. I can't really do anything to add a layer style to that, but I can copy it and create an unlocked new layer. So in order to copy it, remember we just drag it down to the new layer and let go, and we made a copy. Okay, so in order to add a layer style to a layer, you have to double click on the layer, but again, you can't double click on the title because you'll just change the title, see? Uh, rather, you need to double click outside of the tile, so title somewhere. So let's double click, and that brings up our layer style palette window box, whatever you wanna call it. So this is our layer style window, and oh my goodness, look how many things we can do. We have bevel and emboss, stroke, inner shadow, inner glow, satin, whatever that means, overlay, gradient overlay, pattern overlay, outer glow, and drop shadow. And within each of these are so, so many options. Look how many options. My goodness. Okay, so we'll just touch on a few and see what happens, okay? Because it's a lot to handle. Okay. So I'm gonna start with uh, my first favorite few and then I'll let you explore the rest on your own. Just like we did with the adjustment layer styles. Okay, so first of all, let's go with color overlay. So if we wanna add a overlay on top of an image, say you want an image that has just a little bit of pink on top, for instance, we would do that. So we would add a color overlay and then we can select our color here. So I'm gonna go to nice bright hot pink and press okay. So we can kind of move this over and preview our image here with the color overlay. So you're kind of wondering, well, what's the big deal? It's just a solid color, nothing's happening. Well, if we change our blending mode here, then we start to get see things happen. So you can kind of just pick a few and look to see what kind of effect they have on your image. Um, I really like multiply. I think it looks really nice um, depending on the color. So if I chose like a deep dark color, maybe like this could sample this green. Uh, deep dark green and then you can turn down the opacity which makes the green a little less strong uh, or turn it way up and you can change your color you can change the different blending modes to see what they do there's so many different things so many different effects that the layer styles have it's crazy um, but it's really fun to just kind of go through them and see what they all do so that's color overlay very simple so if you wanted to apply it you just have it checked if you wanna just get rid of it, uncheck it, very easy. Okay, so the next thing that we could do, uh, we kinda went over this a little bit with the layer adjustment style, but you can also do this in regular layer styles is the gradient overlay. So if we click on here on this gradient, we can bring up our gradient editor, and here we have our beginning gradient color and our end gradient color, and it's just by default going black to white. So I wanna just make my own custom color, so I'm going to click here, down here, and it brings up this color. So if I click on the color, I bring up my color picker again. So, hmm, which color do I want? Let's pick like a golden color. Here's gold. So now it's just going gold to white. So, okay, let's click on white and then again click the color and let's go to a darker gold. So then I just want about that color is good. And then we go a little darker or we could go a little lighter, which I think is a nice subtle gradient. The thing about gradients is if they're too harsh, going too dark to too light or two complete different colors, they look really cheesy and kind of like flashy, I guess. Uh, if you're into flashy gradients, that's absolutely fine. I'm not one to judge. Uh, but I personally like really subtle gradients that go from just a little dark to a little light, uh, sort of like this. So it's just gradually getting lighter. And then we can press OK. So again, just like the color overlay, the gradient overlay also has these blending modes. So I can choose darken, multiply, lighten, and see what happens. I like multiply, so I'm going to go with that. And you can see it just adds this nice subtle color. OK, and again, also something you can do is change the angle of your gradient. So we could change, so now it's going dark up here to light down in this corner, rather than dark in the bottom to light up top. It's really up to you. You just play, have fun, have a good time, and play with these two, because you can get a radial gradient where it's dark in the center and then gets lighter around here. That's pretty fun. Reverse simply just changes the gradient to be either dark on this side to light on this side, it'll swap it. So now it's dark on this side and light on this side. So it just kind of swaps it back and forth. Um, but I don't really like the gradient on here, so I think I'm going to uncheck it. Let's just uncheck that. Okay, 
So pattern overlay, just the same. You'll have some really nasty, uh, ugly default patterns in Photoshop, like these bubbles. Uh, or let's just use the bubbles for now. If you want to go and find your own patterns, I'll upload some pattern resources for you, and you can get going on those. Um, but let's use the bubbles for now. Again, it'll just default tile these bubbles. <laughs> they look terrible. Uh, and then you can apply blending modes to those as well. That just looks awful. But if you like it, be my guest. Play around with the patterns. Patterns can be really great. Um, their nice thing about Photoshop is that you can add texture to things. And the best way to do that is actually with patterns. So I highly recommend them. Okay, let's move on to the next layer style. Okay, so I like to add layer styles to shapes. So let's uh, get rid of this image. Let's just start with a crisp white background. So I'm gonna go to my black and white cookie, add a solid color, turn that white and we're good. Okay, so we just have, I'm gonna rename this white background. Perfect. Okay, so I just wanna add a simple shape. Let's add a circle. So I'm gonna select my ellipse tool, Draw a circle, a perfect circle, by holding down shift while I drag. Okay, so there's my circle. And now what I'm going to do is apply a layer style to the circle. So again, I'm going to double click on the layer outside of the title. Brings up the layer styles. So let's play now with stroke. Did you see just clicking on that what happened? There's now a black stroke around the entire circle. And so a stroke is exactly what you think it is. It's just a nice border that goes around whatever layer you have selected. So if it was that image, the stroke would be around the outside of that image. Uh, but since we have the circle selected, it's around the circle. Okay, so we can do the size of the stroke. So we can bump this up. I like having it at maybe 20. Let's type in 20, 20 pixels. And the stroke is now on the outside, but we can change that to the inside. Watch what happens. Okay, so now it's on the inside of the shape or in the center. So that's halfway outside, halfway inside. I always like doing the outside or the center, or I'm sorry, the outside or the inside. So let's do the inside. You can change the color there of the stroke. So if I wanted to do a sample just coral and then make it just a couple of shades lighter, I would do this. Or a couple shades darker, I would do that. So let's do a couple shades darker. That looks really nice. Okay, perfect. And then again, you can change the blending mode of the stroke itself by adding dark and multiply. I usually just go normal. Um, if I want to, you could add an opacity if you wanted to as well. Really up to you. Um, the opacity thing is kind of interesting because if I had, uh, let's do okay. If I had an image behind it, let's hide this white background. Can you see what's happening? You have a faint hint of that stroke around the circle, but yet it's transparent a little bit, so you can see the shape behind it, which I think is kind of fun. And oops, and something definitely very, very unique to Photoshop that I think is really fun to play around with, how you can kind of drag it around and still see what's behind it. Okay, so let's go to some more uh, blending modes here, layer styles, I mean. Okay, so we just added a stroke, and you can add more than one layer style to a layer. You just have to keep checking them. So I like to do outer glow, for instance. Okay, so this one by default goes to screen blending mode. I'm not sure why, I actually like it going to normal. So let's bump that to normal, and then it defaults to yellow. Let's change that to a black, okay? like so. And now let's bump up the size of it, okay? So let's bump that up to 30. Uh, let's go even higher. Let's go 60. Okay, so you can see what's happening. It's adding this sh really harsh shadow outside of my layer. Um, so now what I would do is I would bump down the opacity to make that much more subtle. So now it's just a subtle shadow that's going all around my circle, which is really nice and can be applicable in many situations, especially when designing um, graphics or for the web. It's really helpful. Okay, so let's just press OK, and then we're going to move our circle around and kind of take a look and see. Yep, I think that looks really nice. So I could change the color of the circle by double clicking and making it white, but then our stroke is still kind of that coral color, so I think that looks a little silly. Um, but you know, up to you. So I'm going to go Command Z to go back, and then if I do Command Z, it goes back again, or I could go into the History palette and go back 
and find the state where my coral was at. And again, in a later class, we'll go over the history panel and going back in time more in detail. But for now, um, this is all you need to know is to do Command Z, which goes backwards and forwards. Okay, so those are the layer styles that I wanted to show you. Again, just double click on a layer, brings up the layer style window, and you can really play with all of these styles. Choose your favorite. I really like uh, Drop Shadow as well, which is really nice. Um, but in addition to that, Inner Shadow I use occasionally, but not very often. And the others I just really never use. Um, just with everything, you know, pick and choose which ones you love. And I'm just showing you the ones that I and most of my uh, colleagues use the most often. Okay, let's move on, guys. Woohoo! It's finally time for a masks tutorial. I'm so excited about this. Masks are something that I didn't know about for the longest time, and I was using Photoshop for so long and wasn't using masks. And then once I finally learned, it just changed my life and made everything so much easier. So I'm really honored to be teaching you guys about masks. Okay, so the wonderful thing about masks in Photoshop is uh, they allow you to not uh, ruin your work. So um, anything you apply a mask to, you can undo at any time. So um, they're a really non-destructive way to work in Photoshop. Um, and that's really great to be non-destructive, right? Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to use them. Let's get started. All right. Let's first start off by copying this background layer again. We're still using the photo of my apartment. I'm so sorry if you're tired of looking at it. Let's copy it. Okay, so we have our copied layer here. And let's uh, do what we call a selection in Photoshop using a path. So remember those marching ants from the first class, if you were in the first class. Um, I call them marching ants because why not? They're, it's a dotted line that's moving. Um, okay, so let's use this marquee tool. Uh, let's make a circle, why not? So I'm going to hold down shift to make a perfect circle, okay? Now I'm going to let go, and these are what I call the marching ants. Um, we have a line of a path that is selected. And so whenever something selected, or whenever something has the marching ants, it's called a selection, and um, it is a path. So a path, you can see over here, we have a paths window, and that's where we have paths and where we can make paths. And once we move on to the pen tool, I will show you how to make one with yourself, but for now we already have this pre-made, ready to go path um, with our um, elliptical marquee tool that we used. So it's not a shape exactly because it's not using the shape tool, but it's just a little selection that we have on top and we haven't done anything with it yet. Okay, so we just have the path uh, created on top of our layer here. So it's not in its own layer, it's literally on this layer that we have. And so the mask button you'll see is right down here. I think it looks like a little camera. It's a little rectangle, it has a circle inside of it, and it is the layer mask. So just watch what happens when I click on this. Oh, it looks like nothing happened, right? That's okay. So what you're seeing is actually the image below. So what I'm gonna do to just show you what's happening is in between these two image layers, I'm going to create just a white fill layer. Do you remember how to do that? It's, you click on the black and white cookie, and then you go up to solid color, select that, and pick white. Oh, okay, so now you can see what we did. So on this layer up here, we have a circle cut out of what we made. And do you remember a long time ago, I was showing you guys in the first class how we cut out a circle from Kevin and Yoko's photo. Um, I just made a little selection and then copied it and pasted it into a new layer. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that the other way. So here we go. I'm gonna copy this layer here, bring it up above the white fill layer. I hid my background uh, layer with the mask. I'm gonna title that masked layer. And then this one is unmasked layer. Okay, so the masked layer is hidden and we have our unmasked layer showing. Okay, so I'm going to take another circle. I can't guarantee that it will be the exact same as the one before. Uh, so here's my new circle. I have it selected on my image. So here's what I was doing before I knew about masks. I would take it, I would go Command C to copy and then Command V, which pastes the circle in a new layer. 
Okay, so what happened was I would then say, okay, let me just completely delete the one underneath. And now I have this layer with a circle in it. It's still the same. It has a circle with Santa in it, just as I wanted. But with the mask layer, remember we have the same circle with Santa in it. But the nice thing about the mask, you can see it over here on the right side, um, the black and white little graphic here. If I go onto the mask, I could just delete, I could drag the mask and throw it in the trash can. It says, do you want to apply the mask before removing? I don't want to because I'm deleting it. And look, I have my image back. So it's completely non-degrading and it's non-destructive. So I can bring my image back at any time. Whereas my old method, I usually deleted the image. So if I wanted to bring my image back, I couldn't. So that's the lovely thing about masks is that um, it's completely non-ruining. Okay, so another wonderful thing about masks that you're gonna like is let's say we want to remove certain things from an image. Um, I'm gonna do this kind of a sloppy way for interest of time, um, but as we move on, I'll show you better methods. So let's say I want to uh, remove some of this image. So I will apply the mask first without doing anything. So let's see, we have masked layer. I'm going to click on that mask button down here, that little camera. Okay, so there's a mask. You can see how linked to my photo is this little white box. That's our mask. So I want to make sure that the actual mask itself is selected by clicking on it. Okay, so now I'm going to bring up my paintbrush tool. Okay, so the way masks work is uh, whenever you paint black on the mask, it masks it out. So it's going to mask out that layer, which means that it's basically erasing the layer without actually erasing it, which is really cool. So it's just going to make anything that I paint black on isn't going to show and anything that gets painted white on will show. So by default, it's all white, as you can see. So now I'm gonna paint some black on it. In order to bring up black, I like to do this little color swappy arrow thing down here uh, to bring back to the black to the foreground. Uh, by default, it had white on the foreground, so I'm just gonna swap them. So black is on the foreground. And I have my paintbrush tool selected, see brush tool. And now I'm just going to, by default, it looks like it's really tiny. So in order to make my brush size larger, I can do two things. I can go up here into my brush options where it says 13. That is the size of my brush. So I can bring it up to larger, even larger. So you can see on my canvas, uh, you can see that my brush is much larger now. It's 271 pixels, which is what I moved it to. Okay, the other way to resize your brush is by using the... Um, parentheses and clicking them back and forth. So the left parentheses is making it smaller, the right parentheses is making it larger. Okay, so I made it real big now. And so look what happens when I paint black onto my mask. It's actually getting rid of the stuff on the photo that I'm painting. So obviously this looks bad and you can find uses for it wherever you want. Um, in this use, it doesn't look very good, but I'm just giving you an example. So with our paintbrush, see how it's kind of blurry around the edge? I don't think I really like that. So I'm going to do Command-Z to go back in time and revert it back to the way it looked before. So I don't want it to look blurry around the edges, so I'll go back into my brush and do Hardness. It's at 0%, which means it's going to be really fuzzy. It's not going to be hard. So I want to bring that up to 100% to make it hard. And then make sure I'm on my mask layer, and then I'll try it again. And look, now it's nice and it's not fuzzy at all, and I can just paint right on there. So here's where masks get amazing. So now I want to bring back some of the photo to show in here. I'll switch this back to white and then I can paint and my image will come right on back. Pretty darn cool, huh? And at any time, if I wanted to delete the mask, I could do that. I just throw it away like I did before and then I'll have my image back. So this is really nice, again, because it doesn't disrupt my image. I can just get rid of this at any time and bring my image back to the way it was. Or I can just make it all white again and paint white all over it so that the whole image is showing. Pretty darn cool. So if I wanted a circle in the middle, for instance, that was out of the image, I could draw my circle again. And then I could, since it's selected, I have this perfect, cir perfect circle selected, I can bring up my paintbrush by pressing B for boy. That's the shortcut key for bringing up your brush. Or And then I can go over here and select a black as the foreground color and I can just paint inside 
and then it's erasing my image right in the circle. And again, I mentioned this in the last class, but whenever I want this marching ant line to go away, I just do Command D for dog, and it's gone. It's pretty neat, right? So, okay, so now I have this layer which I can move around. There's this big white obnoxious circle in the middle. Say I don't want that anymore, what would I do? Again, we would do one of two things. We could either drag this down in the trash can and throw it away, or we can go back to our brush. I'm gonna press B again for boy. Brings up our brush tool, and then I can paint. I switch this back to white and get rid of it by just painting over. That is how awesome the mask is. Okay, so let's practice a method of when we'd want to apply the same mask to multiple things. Okay, so for instance, if I had another image, let's find another image to put on my canvas. So I'm going to go find and then place embedded because I'm going to embed a new image into my Photoshop document. And I have another image on my desktop, so I'm going to place this one in there. Oh, it's another image of my apartment. Yay. Okay, so let's hide this new image. I'm going to title it new image. I'm going to hide it. Now let's go back to our masked layer. So, okay, so say I want a random shape that I'm drawing selected and masked out. Okay, remember that tool I showed you before? It is called the lasso tool. So it's the one where I can make that marching ant line of any shape that I draw myself. So say I want this weird squiggly shape going around some items in my apartment. Perfect. Just like that. Okay, so there's my random, very strange, squiggly shape. Okay, so I go over to my mask, make sure my mask is selected, and I'm going to make sure black is selected. Then I'm going to select my brush. Now I can paint in here to get rid of that area, as we did in the previous exercise. You're all familiar with this, nothing new. Okay, so my marching ant line is still there, so what do I do now? I press Command D for dog, and there. So, I mean, this ugly shape isn't really pleasing to the eye, but it works for purpose of this class. So now, say I have this new image here, and I want to apply that same mask to my new image. It's easy, I just copy it on over. Um, okay, so what I do here is I go over here to my masked layer, and I go over the mask, and I press Alt or Option, same button on Mac keyboards, and I drag and drop it onto my new image. And look, the mask is now applied to my new image. So I can look at both of them and it's there on both. And remember that it's not actually white on the layer, it's actually just nothing on the layer. So if I hide this color fill white layer, you can see that this new image is now on top of the background and you can see through the new image onto the background layer. So um, it's not actually white. It was just looking like it was white because of this white color fill. So if I change this to, you know, uh, green, it would be green and so on. The last thing that I love about masks, I will show you now. So, okay, let me just show this color fill layer and nothing else. And let's create a brand new shape. So I'm going to create a new layer, name it new shape. And let's just make a triangle let's go triangle okay so i'm doing the polygon tool change the size to three sides up there in my options hold down shift to make a perfect triangle and now we have a triangle it's black for now uh, that doesn't really matter so it's okay um and then let's show this photo layer and let's just delete this mask altogether. let's just start fresh and drag this mask down to the trash can it says do you want uh, to apply the mask layer before removing i do not I don't want that mask to be around. I want it to go away. Okay, so we have our uh, Santa waving, hi Santa, uh, at us above our triangle layer. Okay, so the way I used to do this before masks is I would want my uh, triangle to cut out of my shape. Now, I would actually just go and make sure that the, ma the Santa layer is on top of the triangle hover my mouse in between the two layers and then press alt or option until that little square with arrow shows up and click in between 
which is really great looking because now I have this layer which I can move around. Like if I have the layer, the photo layer selected, I can move it around on top of the triangle, which is nice because then I can center Santa perfectly to where he's waving at us all inside of his little triangle house. Or there's another way to do this with masks. So if I don't want to do it that way, which I wouldn't recommend because it, it's just adding two layers rather than one. So our mask layer is much better. So here's what I do. I go to the triangle layer and I select it. And then right on top of the triangle, the left hand side of the layer itself, you hover your mouse over it and then press command to where that little dotted line square appears and click on it now while you're pressing command. And now you get the marching ants on top of the triangle, which is great, perfect. So I have marching ants. Now I go and click on my mask. Uh, my masked layer is what it's called. It's the Santa layer. I have it selected and now I click on the mask icon down here to add the mask. So now, look, I have a triangle Santa without the shape. So the shape I can completely delete. I don't need that anymore. I just need this one layer. So then the thing that's kind of a mummer, at least I thought at first, was that I can't move Santa around anymore and center him. Um, but that's actually not true. I can do that. So do you see how there's a link icon in between Santa and the mask? If I unselect the link, if I click on it to make it go away, I can now move Santa around. It's perfect. So now I move him around to wherever I want. Maybe I don't want him in there at all. So now I can just press the link again, click in between to make the link back, and now it's a whole thing. Again, if I didn't want this triangle anymore and I wanted it to go away, I could just delete the mask, and now I, have my, I would have my image back. Masks are so great. I'm so glad that I got to teach you masks. I hope you love them. They are so amazing. Let's move on to the next lesson. I want to give you guys a quick little lesson on the direct selection tool because I think it's such a important tool in Photoshop. Okay, so by default, you'll see that your path selection tool over here is the one that is selected. Um, if you click and hold on it, you'll notice that the direct selection tool is underneath. And this is the one I really want to talk about. So I'm going to hold down Z and zoom in a little bit on my canvas. And let's go back over to the direct selection tool and just kind of take a look at what it does. So it allows you to pick out points on a shape or a path and actually move those points only. That probably means nothing to you right now. So I'm going to show you exactly how we can apply that to something real in Photoshop. Okay, so let's draw a shape first. I still have my coral color selected. Let's draw a rectangle. Any size and shape will do. Okay, so there's my black rectangle. Let's make it... Should we make it coral? Okay, so I'm going to just select that coral color that I have saved from before. Okay, so let's click outside of that triangle onto the background, and then let's select our direct selection tool that we talked about earlier. Okay, so without clicking anywhere yet, I remember where the path points on the rectangle might be, and that's the hard part. So on a rectangle, they're specifically on each of the four corners. If you're on a shape that you've created, it's always going to be on a corner. If you need to look to see where the path points are, go on to the layer of the shape and do the command T, and you can see these corner points are where all the paths are. Okay, so press enter or double click to get rid of this. And let's go back to our background because we need to be not clicking on the layer yet. Make sure you have your direct selection tool selected. And again, the direct selection tool you'll always know because it is the white arrow, not the black arrow. Okay, and then you find the corners of the shape and then you select them. So I will make sure that I have, you can see the points, the path points that are not selected are clear circles. The ones I have selected are filled in with black. So if I hold down shift, I can select more than one point. Right now I have all four selected. If I click them again, they will deselect. So you can see I'm clicking, unclicking, selecting, and unselecting. I just want one point selected for now so I can show you what this tool does. Okay, so I just have this point selected. So now what I can do is I can click and drag and move this point around on my own which is really helpful. Photoshop is giving me a little warning that just says this operation will turn a live shape into a regular path. Continue. That is okay. It's just telling us that we're moving uh, paths around and that we're editing our shape. That's okay. In fact, you can just say don't show this again because it's really not a necessary warning. 
we still have our direct selection tool and you see that there's a little path point here. So I can actually move this point in and look, I just made a really interesting arrow. I can move this around too. When I have a point selected, so say I wanna select this point, it's filled in, I can also use my arrow keys to move the point around. And I can press and hold them down and it'll just kind of move on its own as well, which is helpful. Okay, so that looks like a nice place. And then again, if I select more than one point, so I'll select this point and this point, I can click and I can move those two points together. Then we can get kind of interesting shapes that way. It's pretty nice. So that's what the direct selection tool does. Again, I'll do it with another shape just so that you can see. Feel free to exit out of this tutorial if you get it by now. So I will create a, um, let's do a circle. Okay, so I have a circle here and my path points are on each four uh, sides of the circle. So um, you can see one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to change the color here. Uh, let's just choose blue color, let's go more blue. This is teal, that'll do. Okay, so let's say I am not happy with just these four path points and I wanna add more. How would I do that? So to do that, I would go to the pen tool, which we'll dive more into later, but I wanna do add anchor point, okay? So the anchor points, you can see all the ones I have here, one, two, three, four, these are the ones we talked about. If I go to add anchor point, I can click on the circle and add as many as I want. It's pretty nice. And then I can click A, which goes to my direct selection tool. The shortcut for the direct selection tool is A. Click that, and now I can select some of these points. And again, like before, I can drag them out, drag them in, and I can make interesting shapes that way, which is pretty cool. I really like doing this with circles. It's pretty fun. It makes me feel powerful. All right, that's the direct selection tool. Let's move on. Up next, I'd like to talk about transforming things in Photoshop. Uh, throughout this series, we've really done a few transforming things, but I really wanna reiterate what we've done and teach you some new things along the way. All right, so let's start off with a shape again. And this will obviously work with any sort of photo or shape or layer that you have. Um, but I would like to start with a shape. So I'm just gonna make uh, just a random rectangle here. Black is fine, that'll do. Okay, so as I've told you about transforming so far is that whenever you have the shape selected, uh, going Command T, which brings up that transforming box. Um, and here you can click and drag on any of these points to change the shape and size of your rectangle. Okay, but that's about the extent of what we talked about. I wanna kind of dive a little bit deeper now. <clears throat> so once you have this box open, if you want to warp it a little bit, you can hold down command and then go right over any of these points and you can kind of push and pull and move different points like so. So again, I'm holding down command while I do this and it really makes interesting perspective-ish things happen, which is pretty neat. So you could change it into like that if you wanted to and then press enter or you could double click in there to go back to your shape. Okay, so let's do something else. So let's make a new rectangle. That's perfect, that will do. Okay, so let's go edit, transform, and now let's do things this way. So again, we could do something called perspective, which is really nice, and we can kind of do presets. So see how my mouse is moving, but it's only moving certain ways? That's because Photoshop's being smart about it and only let us doing certain perspective things. So you can see what's happening here is pretty neat. Um, they're kind of retaining certain things for us so that our perspective is staying intact. And that's pretty cool. Again, I'll do more perspective for you because this is very interesting. So we'll go edit, transform, perspective. And now it's like almost like going off into a horizon with a horizon line. So we could do things like that, or it's going off in the distance that way. And it's really quite nice, isn't it? It's easy. Photoshop's making it easy for us to do perspective work. I don't do much perspective with my job, but um, I can see that a lot of illustrators definitely do, do this. Okay. 
So lastly, I want to show you how we can flip things and rotate them. For this, I'm going to need an image. So I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded to embed an image in here. I have an image on my desktop of my friend Brooke. Okay, so I'm going to press Enter or double click. All right, so we have Brooke here. Say we wanted to flip her and make her part on the other side, for instance. So she's just reversed. So her hand pointing up is going to be over here and her part will be on the other side. So we'll go Edit, Transform, and then Flip Horizontal. And that flips Brooke right across, which is quite nice, right? Okay, so if we wanted to rotate the entire image, we could do that as well with the Transform thing. So Transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise or 90 degrees counterclockwise or 180 degrees. So if I wanted to turn her 180 degrees, I could, but let's just rotate her 90 degrees. And that just rotates her, which is quite nice. The other way to rotate would be to, let's zoom out a little bit, is to do a Command T again to bring up that uh, transform bounding box. And then I would go to the corner where I see that little round arrow around any of the corners and I can now click and drag and rotate Brook this way, okay? Or if I want to make sure that it doesn't end up kind of almost perfect but not quite, I can hold down shift while I rotate and it snaps to all of the main degree points. So this is a perfect 90 degrees and that way it's always going to look perfect and nice rather than being some sort of weird angular integer. Okay, so I'm going to put her back to how she was. Just like that, press enter, and there, now Brooke is back to the way she was, and everything's good. So that is transforming. I transform everything, and it's something that I probably use more often than anything else. And it's definitely something that will become second nature to you as you use Photoshop more. Let's now dive a little bit deeper into cropping. All right, so I have this image here of Brooke, and you can see that there's a lot of white space on either side of her, and I'd like to crop it to where it's just a photo of Brooke. Okay, so in order to do that, I need to do uh, grab the crop tool. I can do that by pressing C for crop. That's the shortcut key, or you can see the crop tool over here in our toolbar. So there's a few different ways that I can do this. I can just, it brings up this cropping box here. I can just drag the cropping box to fit around Brooke, and it does a really nice job of snapping to the photo. Um, and then I would just press return or enter or double click inside the cropping box and that would crop it that way. Seems easy enough, but there are a few other ways that we can do this that I'd like to show you. Second way to do this is I have my cropping tool selected. I could literally just click and drag and trace over the area I want cropped. So say I don't want it to snap to the photo. I want to rather I'd like to just crop it from here or crop it a little tighter. I can do that. So I can press enter and then we have it cropped that way. The last way to do it is by these ratios. So I could do a ratio of one to one, which would make a square. So once I press enter, that creates a square ratio, which you can see our, our canvas was already a square. So if I want to do a ratio of one to two, here's our ratio of one to two. If I want to do a ratio of two to one, you get the, this ratio instead. And then I can move this around by clicking and dragging, which is really helpful. I can even go off of my photo and crop her to where it looks like this. Press enter, double click, and there's our new canvas. So it's really kind of interesting the things that you can do. There are also preset images, or preset ratios rather, um, like square. Uh, these are just popular ratios for what they probably think that Photoshop users are mo using most often. There's also a really nice straighten feature in which we can kind of straighten our photograph to match up to that line. So did you see what happened? Again, I'm straightening, I'm clicking on straighten. Now I'm drawing a straight line. So for instance, a lot of times with photos, you'll notice that you have lines in your photograph. Uh, I specifically have lines in these wood beams, so I would trace across the wood beam like so, and then it would straighten to that wood beam. Um, I don't necessarily want it like that because it doesn't really look straight to me uh, visually because Brooke seems pretty straight going up and down, uh, but that is something that you will need in the future and will come quite in handy when you're editing photos. 
Those are really all the things you need to know about cropping. As you can see, there are some additional settings here that I don't normally use. Also here is how it looks when your crop is overlaid on top. So um, you can see this diamond because I set it on diamond. I don't ever need those things, but you may. So have a poke around and see what's up with the rest of the crop features. I'm gonna walk through with you how to make your final project. We are going to mix images with shapes and do a really fun image collage. Uh, there's a lot of creativity and freedom here, so I'm really excited to see what you guys do. But here's what I wanted to show you how to do so that you can give it a whirl yourself. All right, so I have this photo here that I took from a recent trip to Stockholm. And I think it's kind of nice because there's a lot of angles in this photo and a lot of triangles and uh, a lot of contrast too. So what I did for the example, and you could see kind of this image on the um, in info page for the class, um, but I'm going to do a different new one for you right here. So I started out with quite a few triangle shapes. So in order to make a triangle, I need to grab our polygon tool and make sure it's on sides of three. And I'll just start making triangle shapes. So again, I'm holding down shift to make a perfect triangle. And as you'll see, it's kind of facing the wrong way from what I wanted. I actually want it to be flipped around. So there are two things I could do here. I could do command T to bring up that transform bounding box and then go to where I see that curved arrow on the outside, hold down shift while I'm rotating and I could do it that way. Or I could undo command Z and go edit transform, flip horizontal. Oh, I'm sorry, I went flip vertical. It's amazing how often I forget the difference between horizontal and vertical. And then I can do it like that. So up to you how you wanna do it, but I usually do it the former way, not the latter way, but um, you know, whatever, to each his own, right? Okay, so now I need to copy this triangle into sort of a pyramid type shape. So I have triangle one here. I'm just gonna title this triangle. So now I'm going to move it over and then I'm going to start copying it. So in order to copy it, I need to make sure that the triangle is layer is selected. Then I'll hold down Alt or Option, same key on the Mac keyboards, click and drag. So if I'm clicking and dragging, I can kind of move this willy nilly all over the place, but I want to make sure that they're straight. So I'm going to hold down Shift while I'm dragging and it keeps it right straight. So see how my mouse is moving all over the place and the triangle is staying within that line, that's perfect, exactly what I want. So I'm gonna line it up real nice. So there's my second triangle, I'm gonna do it one more time. There we go, three triangles. Okay, so now I need to make the next row. So I just need two triangles for the next pyramid row. So I'm gonna grab the most recent two, I'm gonna hold down shift and select them both. And now I can literally just hold down option and drag them both down and move them to where they match up nicely right there. Do you see what I just did there? Okay, so I just need one more to fill up this last spot. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna select one triangle, hold down Alt or Option, click and drag, and then move it down. Perfect. Okay, so I have all these triangles. Now I need to resize them to fill up more of this photograph. So I'm going to hold down Shift and then click the very bottom one so that they're all selected. Now I can move them all around. And now to make them all bigger, what do I do? I click Command T to bring up that transform box again, and I can still move this around. So now I want to retain retain the portion proportion. So I hold down Shift while I resize. I'll make this about this size. How's that? Click Enter to submit, and now I can move this around to where the center is. I like to go with the visual center rather than the real center with weird shapes like this. Uh, so that looks like the visual center to me. Okay, so I'm gonna number these triangles in an order that makes sense to me. I would say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I gotta find the first one. So this is triangle one. I'm gonna rename them just so I can remember because it's really gonna be necessary. So this is triangle two. You can see what I like to do to find shapes is I like to hide and show them to make sure I know which one is which. So this one is triangle three and I'm reordering them in order. Here's triangle four, triangle five, and lastly we have triangle six. Okay, so they're in order now. Okay, next step of the process. So I'm going to be 
copying this background layer. I'm going to do that right now. Okay, it's copied. And then I will be applying it over all of these triangles and kind of moving it around in an abstract manner. So you'll kind of understand what I mean as I go along. So triangle one is up first. So I'm gonna put it on top of triangle one layer. And then we talked about this before. This is my alternate to masks. And this is normally what I like to do first before I add masks. So I put the background layer on top of triangle one and I hover my mouse in between while pressing alt and option until that little icon shows up. And when the icon is there, I click. So I've been noticing from some students that for some reason this doesn't work for them. And if this doesn't work for you, it's absolutely okay. Here's the backup option. When the background is on top of the triangle, just right click on this little background layer and do convert, or I'm sorry, create clipping mask, okay? Create clipping mask. And that does the exact same thing. Okay, so you're probably like, uh, where's my triangle? What happened? You'll notice that it's just on top of the triangle. So if you move this photo layer, you can move it around. And this is how we're going to create our abstract shape. So I like this here, maybe like this. That looks good. Okay, and then we're going to do that with each and every triangle. So I like to just copy this one by making sure it's selected, holding down Alt or Option and dragging it to right above triangle two and letting go, which just copied it. So now I can move this around. Again, I'm going to right click and create clipping mask and then move it around on top of that triangle. Do you see what I'm doing? I hope so. Okay, so that's good. And then again, I'm going to hold down alt option, click and drag above triangle three, and then right click on the photo layer Create clipping mat. Oh, sorry. Create click clipping mask, and then move it around. I just like finding interesting combinations of shapes and textures to kind of mix it up and make it break from what the actual photo was like. That looks good. Okay, keep trucking on. Oops. Copy this by pressing Alter Option, moving it on top of Triangle Four, letting go. Right clicking, create clipping mask, and then move it along. Let's see, let's find, how about this woman? A little bit of her and a little, some legs down there. Okay, so since this man here is the visual focal point of this photo, I like to keep him where he is, but just a little off so it looks a little confusing. So again, I'm going to hold down Alt Option, move this above triangle five, right click, create clipping mask, now I'm going to just keep him on there, but make him just a little bit off. So like this is what I like to do. Something similar to that. Again, up to you what you do. This is just my preference. Okay, again, hold down Alt Option, copy it over triangle six. This is our last triangle. Right click, create clipping mask, and then figure out what looks best for this photo. Up to you. And again, you should just use your own photo for this. Don't try to use mine. Your photos probably look much better than mine do. Okay, so now we have this interesting abstract collage. And what I like to do now is it's kind of looking a little confusing as to what is, you know, sort of this new triangle shape and what is the old photo. So I like to add a little overlay on top of the photo. And do you remember how to do that? It's with those layer styles. So I'm going to take the background and I'm going to copy it again. So now we have a copy on top of the background. Stay with me. <laughs> and then we double click on this new copy layer and we bring up our layer styles again. So we go over to uh, color overlay and look at that. So we have red overlay on top of our image now, but let's, I'm just going to make that black. So I'll slide that down to black and then I'll bump down the opacity to where it's just dark enough to where it's creating enough of a divide between the original layer and this new triangle abstract shape that I've made. I'm gonna, I like even numbers, so let's go to 30 and then press OK. All right, so what I like to do now is just kind of clean up my layers a little bit. So I'll make layer masks for each of these, sh these images rather than having these triangles here because that will cut the amount of layers we need in half. And it'll make this a lot less confusing. In order to do that, I'll start with triangle one, and I will put my mouse over the shape here in the layers palette, the layers window, and press command. 
which gives that marching ants line around the triangle. Okay, so then I select the image that is clipped to the triangle and I simply just click the mask. And now I can delete the triangle. Easy. So now I just have one and I can rename that whatever I want. Triangle one again, it's up to you what you name your layers. Okay, so I'll do that with triangle two again. Hover my mouse over the actual triangle shape in the layers window, press command and then click. It's selected. So now I go to the image it's clipped to and I press the mask. And now I can delete the triangle and name this triangle two. Again, for triangle three, hover my mouse over the triangle in the layers window, hold down command, click. Now the triangle is selected, so I take the image layer that it's clipped to and press mask and then delete the triangle. Okay, I'm going to do that to all of these triangles and I'll be right back. Alright, so I have done that to all my triangles, so as you can see I have far less layers than I did before, which is really nice to look at and a lot easier to find what I'm looking for. Lastly, I have this background copy, so I'll just title that um, the official background. And look at that, everything is clean and decluttered. If I wanted to, I could select all these by clicking the bottom one, holding down shift and clicking the top one, and then right clicking and selecting a color for these if I wanted to, just to keep them organized so that at a glance I know which ones are triangles, but it's really not necessary. So this is the end of my final project. Uh, I encourage you to use your own photography, uh, colors, images, or graphics for this and um, go crazy. I'm really excited to see what you do. I can't wait. I will be peeking in often at your projects and please pop in and look at other students' projects and give them feedback on their projects. Let them know when you like them. Uh, let them know if you see something wrong or see something you could help them improve on. Also, if you have questions throughout this process or throughout this class, please go to the class discussion Q&A feed and ask your questions there. I'll try to monitor a little bit, but please, if you know the answer to a classmate's question, just go ahead and answer it for me um, because I am not really supposed to go in there and answer questions, but I do like to keep an eye on it and help you guys out whenever I can. Um, again, I can't wait to see what you do with your final projects. I am so excited and I hope that you enjoyed this class and I hope that you continue to take the rest of the Photoshop series class. Thanks everybody!